Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, all you out in Subro land. This is Brett Tischler, partner at White and Williams Workers' Comp Subrogation in Philadelphia, along with my colleague, Big Mike Bed. And we're here to talk about, Mike, if you will. Help me help you. How working with claimants counsel can maximize your lien recovery. Yes, and with those silver dulcet tones of yours, we can tell you have a face of radio. <laughs> Don't you uh, know it? <laughs> yes, we're here. We're going to talk about part one: where the necessary evil. So basically, we're going to. We're, this is part of a three-part series. We're going to talk about workers' comp subro. Uh, we've got our lovely producer Kate here listening, trying to stay awake, and we've only just started. Uh, we're going to talk about workers' comp subro, what it is, and why helping third-party counsel can maximize your lien recovery. Isn't that fantastic? So we're going to start out with part one, where the necessary evil. And we start out with what I like to say, help me help you. And I always think of Jerry Maguire from uh, that movie where he says, help me help you. <laughs> um, what are we talking about necessary evil? Well, workers comp, it's an adversarial process, right? you got a guy who gets hurt on the job arguably. And you have the employer who might blame that worker for being responsible. Hey, it's Johnny's fault. He shouldn't have walked in that wall. Meanwhile, the employee might be pointing the finger at the employer saying, hey, I want more benefits or I'm mad that I got hurt. Exactly. Or I might not be getting enough benefits or I might not get the right benefits. There's so much at odds uh, in, the, in the general workers' comp uh, arena. And then on top of that, you have workers' comp subro, which is Mike, you want to explain what Workers' Comp Subro is for all you awake still? We're the professionals that pursue entities outside the employer-employee relationship to get back the workers' comp benefits paid by the insurer, the lost wages and medical benefits that the insurer is going to pay to an injured worker. Our job is to go out, get some of those benefits back, and help keep the employer's mod or premium low as a result. Exactly. So for Workers' Comp Subro, we need to turn that adversarial process onto its head. We need to cooperate because we're not just talking about Domino's delivery guy who gets rear-ended and gets his neck hurts, and then we got to go after the guy who rear-ended him. Certainly, that is a potential work comp subro case, but we're also talking about product liability cases. Something blows up. Guy sticks his hand into a hole and his arm gets ripped off. Happens more often than you might think. Uh, a lot of things like that. That's, uh, that's where we come in. So let's talk about the players that are involved in the general workers' comp subro matter and the whole, and the whole process. We've got, number one, the claimant, also known as the injured worker, also known as the plaintiff. And the reason why I, I have those three different categories of the same person is because the workers' comp people, they look at the injured worker as the claimant. Right? This is the guy who's making a workers' comp claim. Uh, I, on the subro side, he's not making a claim against me. We're stepping into his shoes, into the employer's shoes. we got to go after a third party. So to, him, to me, he's the injured worker. He's the innocent injured worker. <laughs> and then finally, he's Mr. Plaintiff because he's the guy who's ultimately, or the gal, who's ultimately going to be suing some third party. Wasn't my fault I got hurt. Wasn't my employer's fault I got hurt. But because of some other product's defect, some other person's negligence, some other person's liability, this accident even happened. So that's that. Second? Well, with knowing that the, the claimant, the injured worker, and the plaintiff are all three, pe pe are three hats worn by the same person, they, I think, you can accurately describe as potentially the most important player. But the second most important player is the plaintiff's attorney that they're going to go out and get shortly after their accident to represent them, not necessarily in the workers' comp case, but in, against in their claim against a potential third party. I wouldn't necessarily re categorize them as the second most important person, <laughs> but they are they are certainly a, a important part of the process, the injured worker's attorney. And then third is the employer, aka the insured. They're very important too. In fact, they could be critical. Um, and and uh, then we've got the subrogation professional. That's the seven of you listening to this and Mike's <laughs> mom. Uh, hey, she might change careers. And uh, we have the subro attorneys, yours truly, and Lunchbox over here. And we're going to be talking. Uh, and then finally, we have the last category is the other category. What does that mean? It's everyone else. And there's a ton of people involved. 
You're talking about the experts, the liability experts, the medical experts, the public sector, the healthcare providers, the first responders, the witnesses. It could go on and on and on. That's why we say they're the other people, because it's always changing, because it depends on what happened. So let's let's take a step back. We've talked about kind of what workers' comp is, that there's a necessary evil, right? There's a third-party case, and we're the necessary evil because we want money. Um, and we need to turn that on its head. We talked about the players. Let's talk about the process generally. Mike, if you will. Well, every workers' comp claim starts with the same thing, a worker who's injured while in the course and scope of their job. And that is effectively where every subro claim starts, with the accident itself. Yes, the worker then gets work comp benefits. He hurt, he's hurt, so he wants medical benefits. Because he's hurt, he can't work, so he gets wage loss benefits. And that's what we're trying to get back. And what's important to remember about those benefits is in any worker's comp case, the worker is only required to prove that they were injured in the course and scope. There's no fault assessed here yet. That'll be our job later. So it's a very low bar to get comp. Uh, you could have a worker who mops the floor in the bathroom, creates a puddle, slips on his own puddle, and bashes his head into the ground and gets calm, completely his fault. Now, there may be subrogation because I'm sure there's a creative attorney out there who could find somebody else to blame. (laughs) But for purposes of our discussion, we're saying there is none, but he gets calm. And then there are cases where through no fault of one's own, uh, there is an accident. And then there's everything in the middle. Anyway, the worker gets an attorney, and that attorney pursues a third-party case. Hopefully, gets a third-party recovery. Fantastic! And now has to repay the lien. That's where we're happy about that, obviously. <laughs> and all of you people listening, plus mom, plus Mike's mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, but the claimant's not happy about that. Neither is the claimant's attorney. The injured worker, the plaintiff, their attorney. So they get a billion dollars. We want our lien. Unfortunately, there are ways for a clever claimant attorney to try and chisel away at them. And a not so clever claimant attorney, but they're still going to do it. (laughs) So uh, what are the ways to chisel the lien? There's lots. Uh, This is not a secret that we're spilling out here, just so you know. But there are states where employer negligence reduces the lien. There are states where the employer can be brought into suit as a defendant. There are states where the lien is not repaid until the worker is made whole. Made whole. That's one of Mike's favorite. He loves made whole states. Now, nobody out there can see me, but if you could see my face, you'd understand that is the the worst two words you can hear. It's redder than usual. So what made whole means is, for example, we're going to pick on a state. I don't know, Georgia. Uh, In this statute, it literally says that the work comp carrier won't get its lien back until the worker is, quote, made whole. How do you prove that? Well, let's say Mr. Smith was in a plant explosion and lost both legs uh, and gets millions of dollars in comp benefits. And then he sues a third party and gets millions of dollars. And the comp carrier says, we want our money. And Mr. Smith's attorney says, my guy ain't made whole. And you go to a court and he says, judge, my client lost his legs. I don't care how much money he ever gets. He will never be made whole. He can never appreciate swimming in a pool or running after his grandchildren. And the the uh, judge says, yes, no lien. That's made whole. So those are states which are very difficult. But anyway, there are ways to get recoveries, even in those states, even in those situations. Absolutely. And working with the plaintiff's attorney for the best outcome is always the best way to go. Exactly. Because as we're going to be discussing in this series, we, the workers' comp subrogation professional, that means the adjuster, that means the workers' comp subro counsel, that means the employer, that means all of us together. We're the X factor throughout the process. What are we doing? How are we helping? We need to make ourselves indispensable. And how do we do that? That's what we're going to talk about. Right, Mike? You betcha. Now, the first key thing that we're going to have to do is approach plaintiffs, uh, the third-party attorney for the plaintiff, and change the way they're thinking about the case. Rather than compromise the lien, we want them to be thinking, how can they best build their case to get so much money back that they're going to pay the lien? 
I think uh, what we do is so unique. It's such a niche practice to be workers' comp subrogation because there's no way to explain that in a 30-second elevator pitch. Um, whenever we talk to third-party counsel, uh, try explaining to them, sir, I'm not a workers' comp attorney. I'm actually a third party, much like yourself, and I want to help you succeed. And he says, but you're from the carrier, boy. So and that's usually in the South. Uh, oh, so you know it? it never it it never works. They never want to work with us. And it's it's only until they see our value. So that first call where we're talking with the attorney and the attorney says to us, no, I get it. We're on the same side, but not really. Well, we need to change that. We need to change that mentality. And like Mike said, instead of compromise the lien, which is what they're going to be thinking, how can I get, I want to make a recovery and you're going to have to compromise the lien. You're going to have to waive the lien because I'm paying you. We need, to, we need to change that. They need to be thinking, how much do I have to pay? Because I want to pay you. Because, Mike, you helped me. You, you, were, you were my hero. And uh, we helped them get so much money back that it's not a hardship to do so. In fact, they may welcome the opportunity if we drive up their recovery high enough. Now, I want everyone to keep in mind that in this podcast series, remember who we are. We're work comp subro. We're not talking about compensability. We're not talking about coverage. Those aren't fights that we're having. Workers' comp has been afforded. Benefits have been afforded. This is the lien. Our goal is solely how can we help the third party? How can we help move this forward? How can we make ourselves indispensable? Now, there's various roles for the workers' comp subrogation professional. We're going to discuss that in the next coming series, too. There's monitoring a claim. And there's versus active participation. Monitoring a claim, best example of monitoring a claim. So we're sitting here in a conference room in Philadelphia and I'm looking out. Now, when Mike gets into his car and rear ends somebody, they're going to get an attorney before Mike even knew he was going to rear end anyone. That's just Philly. And we don't have to help that person because they already know exactly what they're doing. So a letter to the a letter to that person, right? Only in certain so in a, in a garden variety case, it's sending out a letter. It's just monitoring the case. It's making sure they don't blow a statute. It's making sure that everything goes the way it should, and hopefully a recovery is made. Then okay. there's all the way on the other end of the spectrum, active participation. We're in the trenches with the plaintiff's attorney, helping them claw out as much of a recovery as is humanly possible. We may be involved in discovery, we may be involved in helping them with their investigation, which of course is the most important part of any subrogation action. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mike, I heard a lot of French coming from your office this morning. Oh god. And I mean literally French, not like a curse word. I mean like literally <laughs> Francais. So you were act you were participating in a deposition that was taking place in France. Correct. Because then this particular case, we were you mentioned before, you're going to have a, a large number of people who are going to be X factors that are going to be necessary to your case specifically because of the facts. And in the case we were working on this morning, those people were all located in France. Exactly. So the, so the question is, how much is enough? How much participation, right? How much of the investigation should we be doing? How much of the litigation should we be doing? Very fact intensive. Makes, as you'll see, it, it completely is determinative based on what state you're in, based on where the accident occurred. Did it happen on the insured premises? Did it happen on the third party premises? All those things are going to take into account. Because remember, the underlying thing, and that's what we're going to be talking about, is help me help you. How can we help plaintiff's counsel? How can we, how can we help work with plaintiff's counsel to maximize the lien recovery? Okay. The more they are relying on us, the better it is. So next episode, because we're coming to a close on this one, we're going to talk about investigation. We're going to talk about all the fun of talking with your insurer, talking with witnesses, evidence preservation. It's going to be great. You're going to want to make sure you grab your pencil so you can take down notes because we're full of information. In other words, get a refill of coffee. All right. So listen to us next time on part two of Help Me Help You, how working with claimants counsel can maximize your legal recovery as we discuss how the workers' compensation subrogation professional, say that five times fast, <laughs> can help contribute to the investigation of the third-party claim. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day and live long and prosper. Now Gene Roddenberry is going to write Jesse and Dave. <laughs>